Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duo Sarm here today, back with another Game First Impressions overview. Today's video will be taking a look at Amazon's new MMORPG, New World, that just released this past week. I played this game a couple of times on my live stream, gotten a little bit further on my own, and I think I'm ready to give you my first impressions and overview of this game as a PvE life skill type player in MMORPGs. So if that's the type of player you are, this video probably will help you. But even if you're not, I'm gonna go through a bunch of the different systems and I'm gonna go rapid fire through this with as little bias as I possibly can. So as not to waste any more of your time, let's get into it and let's start with character creation. So when you go to get into character creation, you're gonna be greeted by the server selection screen right here where you'll be able to pick from a variety of different servers and their various locations that you can see on your screen. I already have two characters on the East Coast server for the US, so I'll make one on the West just to show you how the character creation works. You'll then be forced to select a server that you're going to play on. And from here, you'll be able to see the population of each of these servers as well as the queue to get into the server and if you have any friends that are on it as well. After you choose your server and go through the short cutscene, you'll be greeted with the character creation menu. It's pretty straightforward. You have either male or female body types to choose from, a series of face presets depending on which body type you selected at the start, then a series of skin tone options, hairstyle options to click through, as well as the colors at the bottom, facial hair, as well as the colors at the bottom, eye colors, splotches and freckles, various scars to put on your face, and various tattoos to put on your face. There are no body sliders to customize your character any further. You just pick your presets and go. All of these hairstyles are the same between both of the body types and face types that you select from, so there's no variation there. You just pick what you want and get into it. Now after you play through the tutorial in your first few minutes of the game, you'll ultimately run into the game's progression system. So as far as weapons go in gearing your character, you can make any combination of two weapons that you want to build your character. Each of these weapons has different stats that they scale with, and we'll take a look at the attributes menu here in a second. But basically, you can customize your character however you want with your weapons. As you get kills with a weapon, you're going to gain EXP with that weapon. As you level up that weapon, you unlock skill points that you can put into the various skill trees that are available on all of these different weapons. So there's no predefined classes like you might have played in other MMORPGs. You basically make your own class. The attributes menu shows you which weapons scale with which of the stats that you have. So as you level up, you get experience points to put into your attributes here. You dump them however you want to create whatever build you're trying to do. So obviously I'm going for a dexterity build because I'm using the spear as well as the bow, both which scale with dexterity. Now each of these weapons has several different skills in the skill tree, and these weapons can be slotted onto a hot bar, with three of them being the maximum number that you can select. Both weapons you can select three skills, so you get a total of six skills available to you across your two weapons. We'll take a look at those when we get to the combat section of the video. Now moving on to gear progression itself, it's pretty straightforward. While you're out and about adventuring, you're going to get gear rewards from doing quests as well as mobs that you kill. Putting on the gear is super easy, you just drag and drop it into the different slots that it goes into. You have an overall gear score down at the bottom, different consumables that you can use while you're out and about, and generally your typical MMORPG type inventory equipment type thing you've seen. Gear can be bought and sold off of the trade post as well as all sorts of different resources and pretty much anything in the game. So you can go to the sell tab and list anything that you might have. You can filter by the different items that are in your inventories and list them up for sale and you can see how they compare as far as other items with the same name that are up for sale up here in the corner. You can buy whatever you want. So if I was looking for a spear, I could just search spears right here and find any of these different spear items. And the economy itself is an entirely player-driven one. There is not a vendor, at least I have not found a vendor, that you can just sell trash loot to. So you need to either salvage whatever gear you get for the minimal silver reward for it, or find a player that wants to buy it off of one of the different auction houses. Another thing to note is that the auction houses are tied to the city location that they are in. And while we're looking at the map, let's talk about it. The map itself is divided into several different locations. Each of these different locations can be controlled by a different faction within your server. There are three different factions that can wage war and PvP over each other for control over the map. And having control over a map location gives you bonuses while within that region. At the start of the game, you're required to pick one of these different factions through the main storyline. Your pick doesn't particularly matter. PvP is not enforced, so if you don't want to partake in PvP, you do not need to PvP at all. And you cannot be forced into it. The map itself is pretty large, although feels artificially larger due to the fact that there's no mounts. However, once you unlock various fast travel points while you're out and adventuring, you can jump between these different fast travel points that you see, these little double chevrons, as well as any city that you might have visited before, so you can also just fast travel to any city. As far as leveling up your character to be able to unlock all these different things that we've showed you, it pretty much comes down to doing randomly generated quests. So every single city that you go to has your faction manager who will provide you quests, as well as quests that are available throughout the city, and a town project board. If you go up to the town project board, there'll be a series of quests that you can complete, 
and for completing these quests you'll be rewarded with different things so you can see completing this one's going to give me exp some territory standing complete that one complete that one pick up the next one in the line and you get the idea you basically just run it down completing all these different quests to gain exp which allows you to level up your character all right so that's enough of the boring clerical stuff let's get into actual gameplay and start off with combat as we mentioned a little while ago, your weapons determine your combat, basically. So you can make your class however you want, you put on your three different skills, and these skills will dictate how you play. So if you wanted to play a more ranged approach, you could take ranged weapons. If you wanted to be a mage, you could take double mage weapons. You could take a life staff as a healing support to go along with your war hammer. There's all sorts of different combinations you can come up with. The playstyle I've settled in on is a sniping with the bow and a spear for close range combat. Now your abilities that you use have longer cooldowns than you might be used to in other MMORPG type games. Because of this you need to be a bit more strategic with how you go into fighting compared to other games. So here's some b-roll footage of just some generic open world combat and you're going to notice a few things right off the bat. First of all, you can see that I'm trying very hard to keep my opponent CC chained. All of my skills on my spear setup are trying to keep the guys away from me and keep them on the ground so that I can keep getting down attack bonus damage on them and really don't have to interact with them at all. So you can see I'm always trying to knock them away, knock them down, or keep them away using my different skills. And I'm also working very hard to make sure that those cooldowns always have one of these different skills that'll keep something away from me up. So you can see when I got ambushed by this guy coming around the corner and didn't see him, even though I missed my first CC, I still have a second CC up. That way I can keep him away, keep him knocked away, and then just have to rely on my ability to dodge and poke away the rest of the way. So it's a lot more methodical and a lot more strategic than other types of combat systems you might be used to in other MMORPGs. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, it just means that it's different. Now another type of PvE content that could pop up while you're out and about adventuring is an open world event like this one where there's a bunch of people and you all try to zerg down a different boss or one of these little infinite spawn things that shows up during the corruption. And they're pretty fun that they just kind of come up. It reminds me of the things that would spawn in Elder Scrolls Online, honestly, where the bunch of the people on the server would run in to try and knock it out and, and complete it. So it is another interesting PvE aspect that you might run into while playing in the game. I haven't had the opportunity to try the dungeons yet, so when I do get more experience in the game, I'll be sure to cover that as well. And once again, I'm not a PvP player, so you definitely do not want to get PvP opinions about a game from me. Sorry, I'm, I'm not a PvP player at all. So that gives you a general overview of what the combat is like in this game. Now let's take a look at the life skilling type activities. So you're crafting, you're gathering, you're processing, all those different activities that are in MMORPGs. These are your different options. So there's a whole bunch of different ones to choose from. All of these have up to 200 levels to work through. So you can see that I am nowhere near completing any of these. We'll take a look at logging here just to show you. But basically, as you continue to progress through the levels, you get an increase to your gathering speed as well as the various items that you can gather. So different resources that you can gather. If we look at something like smelting, you'll be able to smelt different ores and different bars. If we take a look at something like engineering, you can craft different items, different tools, all sorts of different stuff based on your level, as you can see over here on the side. Progressing these skills increases the maximum stats that you can get from something when you do craft. And generally speaking, it's going to be one of the ways forward for progressing your gear towards the end game stuff, while also providing a viable income source for various activities as well. So to walk you through each of these different types of activities, the first one we'll take a look at is gathering. So you have your various gathering tools located down here. All you got to do is go up to a resource and you will begin to harvest that resource. So right now I'm doing mining, I'm gathering this boulder, and I got some stone that I could use in the stone cutting life skill for processing. Right here, if I go ahead and cut down a tree, you can see you swing your axe to the tree and you physically cut down the tree. If you go up to a bush and you want to grab this bush's resources, the bush goes away after you've grabbed them. If you pick up rocks off the ground, the rocks disappear. So the environment, I don't want to say is destructible, but is interactable. You can interact with the world and gain the resources from it. And then just to show you hunting and skinning as well, we can see we have a deer right here. If I take my shot and miss it, it's kind of disappointing, but that's okay. That's why I got a spear that I can throw. And then I can go ahead and just gap close on the guy and stab it, and that'll be it. So uh, when you've hunted down a monster or anything like that, you walk up to it and skin it with the E key, interact with it, and you'll obtain hides and meats from it. So that is the hunting and, and uh, skinning life skill. So after you've gathered your resources, the next thing to do is to refine those resources into stuff that you can craft with. So inside of each of the cities, there's a ton of different workbenches, all of which do different things. We'll just go to the stone cutting table right here and you can choose how many you would like to craft at any given time. Hit the craft all button, pay the fee for crafting, and you will receive EXP as well as the different resources made. After you've gone ahead and made various resources, you can then partake in the various crafting skills. 
So in this case, I'm going to go to the engineering table. And if I interact with the engineering table, I can make like this bow right here. So there's different items right here that allow you to give specific stat bonuses to your character. So for example, if I wanted to get a focus and dexterity bonus to this bow that I'm about to make, I can equip that right there. You can then infuse this Azoth material right here, which will increase the chances of different bonuses. So if I go ahead and hit that in, I have a very high chance for a gem slot. And you can see the resources that it'll use when you ultimately make this craft. So if I just go ahead and hit the craft button, it'll make one. You can see that I got a green rarity one, a 294 gear score, and it has this little perk right here. So gain four to five for three seconds on a critical. You can then either salvage these weapons, equip these weapons, or sell them on the marketplace to try and make some money. And that is the general flow for crafting. So with crafting as well as combat out of the way, that just leaves one last thing to look at here, and that is going to be the cash shop. And right now on the cash shop, all I see are cosmetic things. So consumable dyes, different skins for your characters and stuff, as well as some emotes that you can use. So only cosmetic things in the cash shop at this time. And that is the last thing that I wanted to cover in this video. So I tried to go over as many different systems in the game as I could with as little bias as I possibly could impart on it. But stepping away from that neutral perspective to close out the video, I'm going to give you my own personal opinions on the game and what I think. So all in all, I think New World is not a world beater, it's not the best game I've ever played, but it's certainly not the worst. I think this game feels weird because it's trying to fit in a hybrid sort of situation in the MMORPG genre to bring in additional players and bring in new players into the genre, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you look at things like the life skilling system in the game, it's in depth, but it's not like in depth to the level that you expect from a typical MMORPG. There's a lot of different things in it that you can do, but it's also pretty accessible to someone that would be like new to the genre. If you look at the combat system, it's nowhere near as in depth as any MMORPG you've ever played before with all of your hot bar skills or Black Desert where you have to memorize combos or things like that. But it does give you a little bit of flexibility with your builds and customization types things. The user interface is super clean, drag and drop, easy to use, and it kind of harkens back to other types of games like MOBAs or first person shooters where you drag and drop your loadouts and things like that. So what I'm basically trying to say here is I feel like this game is meant to try and bring in different people to the genre while also appealing to people who really like MMORPGs. If you're looking for a diehard new MMORPG, I don't know that this quite is going to be your thing. But if you're looking for a change of pace to the current MMOs that you're playing, or if you're maybe like a hardcore MOBA player and you're looking for a sort of MMORPG type crossover sort of thing that you'll enjoy, this might be something to check out and be interested in. As far as for me, I'm definitely going to keep playing this one. I want to make some life skilling guides for people because I am a life skiller in Black Desert and that's kind of what I do in every RPG that I play. But yeah, all in all, I think it's a solid game. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video, so I do hope you found it useful. I hope it's going to help you to decide if you want to play this game, if you want to pick it up. If it is, let me know in the comment section below. And also, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. It would really help to grow my channel. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching once again. I'll see you at the next live stream over on Twitch, the next YouTube video, or wherever I happen to see you. Peace.